Hey there, fellow coder. In today's mission, we're going to be building upon our uh, goal of building a React plus Spring Boot web application from scratch. And today we're going to be diving into the React portion of that and getting started with the front end of our application. So if that's something you'd like to see, stick around. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Um, if you don't already have uh, something called Git Bash, I would recommend installing uh, Git on your computer if you're on a Windows uh, machine. If you're not on the Windows machine, if you're on a Mac or something, you probably already have access to a decent uh, command line shell that's you know sort of a, a Linux-ish based or Unix based shell. Um, Git Bash is just that for Windows. It's a, it's a um, uh, sort of a, a Unix based shell uh, that we can use that's um, uh, nice in Windows. So instead of using Windows PowerShell or the regular command line tool for Windows, um, <clears throat> this is just uh, a nice uh, tool to use um, that is also tied in with Git. So uh, you can go to you know download Git and this comes with Git. Uh, I'd highly recommend it if you're on Windows. So once you have that installed and running on your computer, which shouldn't take you too much effort, um, we can now get started with our React project. So uh, the first thing I need to do here uh, is to navigate to the same folder that your, <coughs> your current application exists. So for me, that is on the C drive. Uh, let me think, users, uh, then my username, and then it is in, is it Git? I think that's where it is. So we change directory ID there. I'm gonna list out the direct, uh, the folders here, and I think it's in here somewhere. Uh, da -da -da -da. Where is it? What is it called? Um, uh, assignment submission app. That's our folder. So we can change directories into the assignment submission app, <clears throat> and this is where our Git, um, uh, which call it is our Git repository is located here. So you see, it says master now because we are on the master branch. Uh, now this is the actual um, uh, what you call it app. Uh, uh, backend app. So uh, he, there's a few things that you can do here. You can probably create another folder. Um, you know, you can make a directory, maybe call it the, you know, web or the front end or something. It doesn't really matter. This is just for your purposes. So I'll just create something called front end. So now we're in a fresh folder within our uh, assignment submission app um, subfolder or root folder, whatever you want to call it. And this is where we can get started with. Um, uh, NPX. So you will also need to install Node on your computer. Uh, my current Node version, not VS, <clears throat> Node version is 14. My NPM version is 6.14. <coughs> These are a little out of date uh, for um, the time that I'm recording this video, uh, the, date, the date that I'm recording this video, close to 2022. So uh, yeah, these are even out of date for that. Um, but you know, you shouldn't really hit that many pro I guess I should probably update them. Um, yeah, let me update them. All right, now I'm not an expert with this. I just did a quick uh, uh, Google search. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna YOLO this and say npm install g npm at latest. Uh, we should up update my npm version. I don't think I, I need to update Node because we're not using Node. Uh, I only installed Node so that I can get access to npm. So if you don't have npm on your computer, which is the Node package manager, um, then uh, you can download Node, um, and then whatever the current version is is probably just fine. Uh, but anyway, let's see if this works. If this doesn't work, then oh, this could be a whole other video probably. Um, so we cross our fingers, and uh, I guess I'll pause the video. Uh, and if anything exciting happens, uh, oh no, I guess I won't pause the video. Is that it? NPM 8.3. Oh my goodness, NPM version. Holy cow! All right, that was surprisingly easy. I like it. So now. I'm on the latest version of NPM. <clears throat> so with being on the, it uh, doesn't matter what version of NPM you're on, uh, the uh, following is still the same. So uh, you use no uh, NPX, I believe it is. Um, and then, oh, actually I haven't done this in a while. I think it's create uh, react app. And then you uh, type in the name of your app, um, which really we probably should have said front end for the app just to say it's the front end of the um, the app itself. Uh, we'll call this web for now. Uh, will be installed, create React app. Oh, I see, create React app wasn't installed, so there you go, it's going to install it for us. And then it's creating a new React app in slash front end slash web. Now again, that's not the greatest 
Um, I, I would have liked to see the uh, React app get created <laughs> inside of the front end um, folder. And I probably could have uh, achieved that by instead of typing in web, I probably could have typed in the period character just to say choose the current folder. Uh, but anyway, I, I think the, the fix here is just going to be after it's done to cut and paste the folder back one level and then we should be fine. So this process of npx create react app is going to create, lo and behold, <laughs> a react app uh, from scratch, just like a boilerplate, um, simple, get you up and running version of a react app such that you'll be able to run it and see uh, you know, the spinning React logo. So once this is done installing, it takes about, I don't know, five minutes or so, um, I will uh, chime back in with this video. So I'm gonna pause it now. We'll come back when it's done. All right, terrible timing. I literally, as I click pause, it finished. So there you go. Uh, so now if I go into, or if I say LS, to list out the uh, folders, we see that the web folder is there. Now, this is where I would probably copy uh, or cut the web folder and paste it back one level. But anyway, for now, we'll just go into the web folder and have a look. And as we can see, we've got some files there. So from here, what I would do um, is I use uh, an IDE called VS Code, which is Visual Studio Code, which is a Microsoft product um, to manage my React stuff. You could open up all these files in Eclipse, <clears throat> keep everything in one place. I prefer VS Code for my React development. That's just that's just me. Uh, now, can I can you uh, launch it by doing code? I forget if that's the oh there you go. So if you do code and then dot, what it does is it it opens up um, VS Code wherever the folder was that you pointed it to. And when I said dot, I said current folder. So it opened up <clears throat> this uh, Visual Studio Code inside of our um, uh, web folder. So now that we're in here and we've got our files um, loaded up, what can we do? This is you know a whole new um, a whole new environment. I'm just gonna dismiss this. I've got some some extensions and stuff installed here. Do I can I see the extensions? Yeah, when I click here, you can see the extensions. Just so you can see what I'm working with. Um, I have something called ESLint, which is sort of a it's kind of it's kind of like a compile time checker for your code. Um, it's not because uh, the, the JavaScript language in React is not a compiled language. It's an, in an interpreted language. So it's not like a, uh, a, um, a Java app that has a compiling, uh, <clears throat> you know, routine or whatever you want to call it. But a linter is kind of like that. It kind of, ch every time you save your code, it'll check it to see if there's any, you know, common issues or whatever. I also have a prettier, like, or prettier code formatter. Uh, which is used when I save my code, it'll format my code all, every single time I save, which I like. And then React Code Snippets is a uh, plugin that allows me to type in some simple uh, keystroke characters and, and have it auto create code. Um, so you type in like React stateless component like RSC or something, and then hit enter and it'll uh, you know create a class for you or something like that. Anyway, you, you'll see it when we use it. But just so you know, those are the the installed um, extensions that I have. I only have three. Um, so if you wanna be able to use VS Code, like I use VS Code, I would install these three. Cool. Now, how do you use uh, uh, Visual Studio Code that you might be out of sorts here? Well, there's this whole welcome tab thing. Most of your code will be open in tabs here, just like uh, uh, Eclipse has tabs up top. That's what's going on here. Um, the important files are under source. And the most important file to start with is app.js. When I click on that, bloop, it opens up here and we see the app.js class. So I'll get into what this code is, uh, but how do we run it? I'd like to run this app um, to see what's going on here. What is their, what is their boilerplate you know, standard program or whatever? Well, to do that, I, I usually open a terminal within VS Code. You don't have to. You could do this inside of the git bash window or your own command line tool that you prefer. Um, whatever you like to do, go for it. Um, I just like to open up a new terminal in here because it keeps all in one space or one spot. You see that it's already in that assignment submission app front end slash web folder. Um, and how you run it is you do npm, node package manager, um, npm run, I think, is as simple as it is. Uh, let me see if my, no, npm start, sorry, npm start is how you do it. There we go, so it'll fire up the app. This usually takes, I don't know, 15 seconds or so, maybe 10. Oh, or, or how about five? And then when it's done, uh, you see it launches a browser tab and it should show you the spinning React logo. There you go. So this is um, a your the React app that it has created via that NP, NPX create React app command. So 
So it's created this boilerplate app that we can mess around with. <clears throat> so if we look at the code, um, app.js, this is the screen that we're seeing here. This screen is, is essentially app.js. This is where the, the entire content of your application will exist. And I can prove that by deleting everything in here uh, except for um, the div. Okay, and you notice there, let me go back. I clicked save, Alt, uh, control S, and you see it reformat my, reformatted my code. That was the, I think, code formatter here. Prettier code formatter is the, uh, is the extension that does that. And as you can see now, it's saying, hey, you have a, a warning here. You're, you're importing something called logo that you're not using. That logo was that spinning logo thing that we saw, so we can delete that. And uh, there we go. And uh, if I flip back to my browser now, um, I'll try to have the browser on screen at the same time. How can I do this? Uh, what is it? Windows, there we go. And then that, and then can I like do this? So just to show you um, what's going on, I should probably also make this text a little bigger. Um, I can show you, I, I can put in a div here. I can say like, uh, I don't know, hello world, and then save. And then boop, hello world shows up over here. So what's nice about React as a front end uh, environment or a, a, a separate sort of la uh, language on top of plain old JavaScript is you get these little perks that make you feel good about yourself, right? As you're, you know, let's add an H1 tag around hello world. Uh, hopefully you guys understand HTML and save it. And then boop, you know, immediately see the result uh, on inside of your browser. So it's really neat. You can sort of see it as it goes. There's not a whole lot of delay between when you change it and when you see stuff changing. Um, so that's nice, okay? Cool, so just to show you, yeah, everything is inside of the, the app uh, file, app.js. There's also an app.css. This is where your um, styles go, right? Those, this is just sort of your, your global styles. So if you wanna mess around with this, you can, uh, but pretty much everything in here is based on that npx create react app command created this for that spinning logo you know design as you can see for it it's it's aligning the text center which is why this hello world is in the middle if i get rid of this and save um it's no longer centered right so i'm just going to delete all of the css because we don't really care about any of that css right now and uh yeah we can just have sort of a bare app to work with <clears throat> work from now the other thing to note is that React is a something called a single page application, meaning that everything, all your code is in one spot. All your code is in one file, one HTML file. And you can see that in the public folder, there is an index.html. So this index.html is literally the entire application. So how uh, React works is it takes this index.html file and loads it up on the screen, right? And then this, has a div called uh, a div with an ID root. Again, I'm assuming you guys know HTML. If you don't, I'm so sorry, um, go learn HTML. Uh, so, so easier said than done. Uh, the div here has an ID of root. This is literally where the entire, also that entire app.js lives. So the app.js file, which is the entire React app, is rendered inside of this div tag, okay? If I delete this div tag, I think everything breaks. And if I save, everything breaks. You can't see that it's broken, but it doesn't matter. Everything's gone now because everything is rendered inside of this one div tag, okay? That's why when I delete it, every, the hello world goes away, but really everything goes away. So just to show you, there's just a, an, this one HTML file. That's it, right? This is one HTML file, your entire application, its entire life cycle from start to finish. Nav as you're navigating through all these things and doing everything and interacting with the app, everything happens in here in this one index.html file, okay? That is how a single page application works, SPAs. Um, one file, everything is inside of it. So that's the HTML. You rarely touch this. You might touch this to like inject uh, a more meaningful title. Like right now the title is what, React app? Is that in here, React app? Yeah, title is right here, right? So you can create like a dynamic title or something, or you can change this title to be anything you want, like app submission or um, assignment submission. Save that, and then it changes it to assignment submission as a title. Um, but yeah, you can also make this dynamic, and, and we can talk about how to make things dynamic um, uh, later in terms of the titles. But uh, yeah, for now, I just want to give you an overview of um, how to sort of get started with uh, a raw, um, ready to rock uh, React app. As you can see, it's not very difficult. 
Um, there's probably tw uh, plenty of tutorials out there that show you how to do it, but obviously this tutorial will evolve uh, to be um, uh, tailored to our assignment submission app, right? The, the point here is that we want to be able to uh, communicate with our uh, back end, our, what you call it, um, our Java application. So in the next lesson, we'll dive into some more of those details. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, do so. That way you won't miss that next lesson when it comes uh, around. If you want to support the channel, please also do give this video a like. And I look forward to delivering more super awesome, crazy, amazing, valuable content uh, nuggets like this one in the future. So uh, please do subscribe and like. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Take care of yourself. As always, happy learning and bye for now.